Hello, everyone, and welcome to Between a Pot and a Hard Place. I'm Stephen Colton. And I'm Chris Kirkpatrick. And we're broadcasting live from our Facebook group for the first time. We are. I think um, I don't know yeah. why we waited this long to do that. I think I got so used to saying, check us out, facebook.com slash between a pot and a hard place. Right. And it's just right. ingrained in my mind. But now we can officially say, because I didn't want to go like, hey, everybody, make sure to tune in next week to facebook.com slash group slash two, 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 two. <laughs> but you get the ability to edit your URL for your group. Um, right. Well, until, think, you, until you get a thousand followers. Once you hit a thousand followers, you can't edit the name anymore, um, which is weird. But yeah. But it, it's now officially facebook.com slash groups slash between a pot and a hard place. Yeah, I feel like our our between a pod um, between uh, between a pod and a hard place group has just exploded as it far really as you know the the discussions we're having, a lot of the the conversations that are taking place, uh, the memes that are being shared. And so, I mean, I think it's just the perfect place for us to go and share our the podcast and our discussions and really encourage them to have that same kind of dialogue while we're on the air. Exactly. And I'm hoping this was kind of a last minute idea. So I'm hoping it translates to some people and they go, oh, let's go there. Because maybe there's some people that we, you know, have, have started following us and stuff. They're like, oh, well, we don't know what this groups thing is. So I know it might you know, take a, a week or so to, for people to get used to it, but I think it'll be fine, you know, because our larger audience right now really is a group. Yeah. And yeah. we've got so much attention there and the Facebook, the Facebook broadcasts even more so than YouTube, which YouTube's climbing. It is. Um, but still it's a slow process. So we might hit a couple of speed bumps adjusting to the new way we do things with the group, but it's really not that much different. No, not at all. The commenting will be a little bit different. I think something about groups um, doesn't automatically show names on comments. So there, there's going to be a learning curve a little bit, but it's overall going to be the same process. So All I don't right. know. Yeah. Uh, hopefully the comments aren't much different. No. I, you know what? I wanted you to go and share that book that you had. I feel like this is like the yeah. perfect moment to go and share that. And another reason I thought of this is because, you know, I saw in a few groups that I'm in about people for 9-11 in remembrance. They talked a lot about Stan Lee because they – I mean, Stan Lee wasn't like in the World Trade Center or anything that day. But for a lot of people, he embodies New York, you know, and I don't know. I don't see it because I'm not, I'm not saying he doesn't, but I never looked at it that way. But um, this is an Entertainment Weekly uh, publication that's a commemorative magazine that came out once before, I believe, and they have reissued it again. And it's the Stan Lee Life of Marvel and the glare off my computer screen. There we go. Yeah. Um, and it really just shows like his universe, his legacy, uh, his heroes. And, and on the back, there's a really cool picture of him back in the day when he was, you know, really creating all this stuff. I mean, you consider the guy lived to be what ninety five. Yeah, he, uh, had a really long life, and I, I think it, even before we had started our episode tonight, I, I had asked the question. You know, what if there were no Stan Lee? I mean, I think yeah. you could make the argument that so many of the things that we love, that we talk about, that we celebrate, wouldn't even exist. They really wouldn't. Right? I mean, there there are so many characters. Oh wow. I this is awesome because I've been watching as we might mention this tonight. I've been watching Heroes again for yeah. the first time in a while. Um, which and we posted this on our Facebook group and stuff that that's how we originally met was on a Heroes fa uh, Facebook yeah. page. I didn't realize or had forgotten Stan Lee was on Heroes. And I had forgotten he was a bus driver oh, okay. when Heroes was getting on the bus. I mean, that's I think that is screenshot from Heroes. Yeah, I mean, I think that that's really one of the one of the awesome things about Stan Lee is that he uh, always got himself a cameo and everything right? more and than everything, movies. right? Here, he, here he is in Family Guy. <laughs> okay, and The Big Bang Theory. I don't know if many people watch that show, but he was on that one. Um, but yeah, this there's a whole section in this magazine about like his cameos, um, The Simpsons. I mean, I could go on and on. Like, here he is on page one. Here he is on page two. Let's read the whole magazine to you. But um, we won't go through all of that. But still, this is an yeah. amazing, an amazing book. 
I mean, I, just the truth is that, you know, Stan Lee and his legacy, right? I mean, all of these movies, whether it's Avengers or Spider-Man or X-Men um, and countless others, right, that he had his hands on. I, I just, um, I think that we, we don't even realize just how important a person he is to uh, the comic books that we enjoy. Yeah, I mean, for sure. Um, as far as this Facebook group, we may try different things. I didn't want to like get derailed from anything, but the comments are going to be a little bit different. It looks like uh, you can't post comments to Facebook groups. As oh, far really? as like, we can't, like while while commenting, I can't post. So when it comes time to do our little Twitter plugs, we'll just kind of like just say them because we may or may not stick with this. We'll see what happens. Yeah. We'll discuss it. Yeah. But very soon, I hope to get back to the multi-stream, so we'll be able to cross things and, and do things. But yeah, Stanley. I mean, my favorite—I think my, my favorite Marvel character. I don't know if it's for nostalgia or for whatever reason, but Spider-Man has got to be up there. I mean, he's on everything, and I believe that was Tobey Maguire Spider-Man right there. On the I front people, of the it seems like everybody has their their favorite Spider-Man. Um, You've said before that yours, yours is who? I, I think as far as the, the more realistic Peter Parker, I would go with Tom Holland. Um, just because, I mean, he seems more accurate. He seems the more appropriate age. He actually was, he, he, he's believable as a kid in high school, where Tobey Maguire is like someone's uncle in high school. Right. Um, and Andrew Garfield is just, mm. and I don't know who this is, but. Toby Maguire. Yeah. Because that's what happens with the Facebook group stream. And uh, it'll just say Facebook user. So we may actually end up going back to the page instead. But we'll see. Like I said, I don't want to linger too much on it. Sorry. Right. I mean, um, I will I will say for me, um, I, I really enjoyed Toby Maguire. I mean, that yeah. those three movies that he was in, I could watch over and over and over again. And I have. Those have been those have been favorites of mine. Um, even if I find that some of them are of, of variable quality, the first two I think are absolutely fantastic. Third one, a little bit of a of a drop off. Um, yeah, I and here's uh, there it is. I'm glad I found that pretty quick. There's an image um, in this book from the third one. Now, when I saw that in promotional material, I got excited. Yeah, yeah, because I knew what that black suit meant. Um, it meant better. Yeah, but I mean, I didn't expect Topher Grace. And when I saw Topher Grace, I was like, okay, maybe it's going to be good. I don't know. And then when Venom, like, you see Venom for the first time, when it, the, the suit gets on him, when he goes to church to ask God to kill Peter Parker, like, okay, that was kind of funny. Um, nah, somebody has a name. So maybe this is not a lost cause. There maybe we, we go. Do it. Dale Guzman Jr. Yo, what's up? Hey, welcome thanks to the for, show. Yeah, welcome. Yeah. Thanks for finding us. Thanks for like figuring out how to do the name on your comment. Um, that's awesome. Um, another comment coming in. The first Tobey Maguire movie, I think, epitomized the ethos of... I almost said Superman. Wow. Spider-Man. <laughs> and I agree with that. I yeah. think because it was, it was a fun, like, fun kind of thing. And it had like the nostalgia of Spider-Man. It made you feel like this is a Spider-Man movie. New York, pizza, pictures, Joan Jameson, I uh, think, Mary Jane. I think, yeah, I think a lot like the the Matrix, uh, the first Spider-Man movies, they really were able to make the action seem believable, right? Mm -hmm. I, you didn't see you didn't see the wires. It seemed very realistic. Uh, and I really I really enjoyed that. Um I don't know why Andrew Garfield as Peter Parker and Spider-Man just kind of hit me differently. I think he's a fantastic actor. I've seen him in a lot of other things and his performance is okay. But I think like a lot of people, he just, he always kind of winds up at the end of my list. Um, I still love Tom Holland. I think he brings this, this youthful joy and energy and enthusiasm um, to the character, even like that sense of wonder, um, his banter, I think, is the best banter of any of the Spider-Man. Yeah, I mean, 
all of them had a little bit of it, which is good. Um, Toby Maguire was was kind of funny. He had that, you know, it wasn't really his banter in this one scene that I thought was funny. It was like the situation where he's delivering pizzas, and it, this is his last shot. If he doesn't get them there on time, he's this is Spider Man Two, I believe. If he doesn't get there on time, he's fired. And then, so he's going on his bike, and he's like, "Okay, I'm never gonna make it like this." So he, you know, goes into an alley, comes out, Spider Man, and then. This whole time, there's a guy like off to the side. He's like, "Spider Man, you stole that guy's pizza." <laughs> you know that that was probably my favorite like funny moment, right? In any of the three movies because of that. And, and then he goes, this other guy like finds one. He's like, "Oh, because because he drops them off to save a kid from a bus or whatever it was." And then he goes back to get the pizzas. And then the guy already took a slice. He's like, "Oh well, I'm gonna eat this slice anyway." And he goes to eat it, and then he webs it to the slice out of his hand, and right. Like, I mean, you already know that you're gonna get fired. You already know that people aren't gonna pay for the pizza. Just let the guy have the slice. I and mean, come on, that guy could have starved, and Spider-Man is responsible. Right. Um, right. But no. Um, so there's a lot of fun in in those first three movies. Uh, the Amazing Spider-Man. I can't really think of anything great as far as like comedy, but he did have that like he didn't feel like a kid from New York, but. I don't know, but Tom Holland definitely has the overall best personality, flow, comedy, and like the young teenage charm. I guess. I think the benefit we've had with Tom Holland as Spider-Man is not only has he had his own standalone films, but we've also seen him integrated into the wider MCU. Right? We see him in Civil War. We see him both in. Um, in Infinity War and in Endgame. And I think that that really has given him just a lot of different opportunities to to grow into that character. Yeah, for sure. Um, Dell actually post another comment. He's going to be our Corey for the evening, I guess. Yeah, I guess. Um, um, can't wait for the new Venom in what, like 18 days. Right. No expectations. And yeah. I'm, I'm honestly more excited for uh, Woody Harrelson's uh, Carnage because we've seen Venom. And we know what Venom is. We know who he is. We know it's a great character. I'm still confused on liking Venom because it's like you're supposed to hate him. He's a bad guy. But this is a different version, and it works. It's like an anti-hero Venom. Exactly. But then yeah. you have Carnage, and we've never seen a live-action Carnage as far, as far as I know. you know. And so I'm really excited about that. Yeah, I mean, I really love what they did with the very first Venom movie. I thought that was really, really solid. I thought it mm -hmm. was it was believable. They did, did a really great job of, um, I think, of uh, dealing with the the challenges of being in a uh, a symbiotic relationship with a uh, with an alien uh, inhabiting your body. I think that was it was humorous um, and terrifying and amazing kind of all wrapped up in one i mean mm -hmm. like for you think about it if you had the ability to have superpowers but the trade-off is that you had to give up partial control of your body to do it yeah i, I don't know i think you know i it would be a real toss-up it would be and at the same time though i think i would feel i would feel like it's not really me having the powers it's really just me riding in a vehicle that has the powers because honestly, but then again, Venom needs the host body in order to function. So it's like you're you're basically the fuel for the car, but you're not really controlling it. So it's it's kind of a weird mixture. It would be what I'd imagine being Firestorm, where you would be the part like the brain of it, and you'd be back there like, wow. So you should probably like, kill that guy now. You're not going to, please. And then you're just back there like. Without any physical control, but you're like your brain is there. So it, it would be a different experience, but I think I would try it at least once. Yeah, I think they've done a great job though of showing both. I think the internal struggle, um, and yet I think the even the moral side of things of trying to trying to do the right thing, uh, and yet at the same time having this very vicious side of this character's personality. So I'm excited about 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 number two. And if I. Uh, if I got the symbiote on me, just like Tobey Maguire, 
he would be he was dancing around, skipping, like now take this. <laughs> I would be full on venom looking. But sitting here going like, "Hello, Batman!" I'm a blah, 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 blah. Yes, that would be me. I wouldn't be out like terrorizing people. I'd be home playing with toys. Right. But instead, of, instead of toys, it would be like real life helicopters and cars. I would wrap them up in my venom webs and like, blah, 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 and I don't know, put on a puppet show with real people like, "Hello," and like hold them up and I don't know. People would be afraid of me, but then they'd be like, "What? He's just doing a puppet show." Like he'll drop Aunt Aunt Susie in a minute. She's she'll be fine. And little little Sally who just wants her doll back. It's okay. Um, that's that's yeah. random. I think for me, I've always been very uh, accident prone. And the idea that while venom is inhabiting you, any injury that you get gets automatically healed. I mean, that's yeah. pretty. That's a that's bonus, right? And it you is. consider like the uh, enhanced strength, the enhanced speed. Being able to, you know, climb up walls and and do all of those things, uh, swing from buildings. I mean, you know, if if Venom could fly, it would be absolutely perfect. Oh my gosh! I guess in a way he doesn't need to because he's he can like web throw just like Spider Man. But at the same yeah. time, like if he wouldn't have to do that, he could just fly and then like web people. I don't know. That'd be amazing. That's why I always thought like, what if? Venom could cross over into DC and just take over uh, Superman. Yeah. Because you would have this Kryptonian who would be, you would at first think he wouldn't be uh, susceptible to the, to the thing because he's like Superman, nothing can like, but it's alien. So depending on which Spider-Man universe you're talking about, if you're talking about the one where he was built in a lab, then it probably wouldn't affect Superman. Which I think that was like Ultimate Spider-Man or something like that. Right. But if you're talking about the real Venom from the actual real comic books, not, well, they're all real comic books, but I never liked the lab story. But I think it, since it being, it being alien, I think that it could affect Superman. And just imagine, we've seen evil Superman before, but imagine an evil Superman Venom that's flying around, has laser vision and the like Venom web things. Be kind of crazy. Yeah, be yeah. I don't know how you could stop him. I don't know if he would be able to because kryptonite. I don't think kryptonite would work because the, the alien symbiote would probably like out, overpower the kryptonite. And so it would be you would need like another maybe you would need doomsday or a venomized doomsday versus a venomized or a carnageized uh, doomsday versus venom. Oh man. I wish they would do more. I wish Marvel Studios or Disney and um, Warner Brothers would get together and be like, look, let's do a crossover movie. The Avengers versus Justice League or something, you know, Spider-Man versus Batman. I don't know, whatever, but that would be amazing. They did it. It really would be. It would they be. Did I would comics. Yeah. I, there was a time in the comic books where they had essentially blended Marvel and DC together. So you had like a, a, a fusion of Batman and Wolverine uh, together, right? Um, uh, a, a fusion of uh, Jubilee and Robin. Yeah. Uh, so you had you had mashup characters that were that were both characters kind of all wrapped up in one. So we got um, whoops, Superman has been taken over before by Raven's dad, so it can happen. It can happen. But and, we also uh, know that we know that works. Superman absolutely has a weakness to magic. Yeah, so that certainly would explain that. And I remember in Smallville, there were countless times where um, Clark was overpowered by magic, whether it be from Zatanna or, which I really loved the Zatanna in Smallville. That was so good. Like the character was great. A lot of those Smallville versions were like watered down, like Aquaman, who now we know as is, is very Hawk watered from, down from yeah. Titans. <laughs> Huh. Hawk from Titans was the worst Aquaman ever. Right. Imagine that. Like, not the worst, but, you know, I, I liked him better than the pilot of the CW standalone Aquaman series. Because I get, I got, to, it's online somewhere on YouTube or something. They had Justin Hartley, who was Smallville's Green Arrow, playing Arthur Curry Aquaman. And it was going to be a series. And 
of course, he didn't get picked up. And I'm like, okay, it wasn't great, but it wasn't the worst thing. But the guy that Smallville ended up with as Aquaman is a little bit better. Um, yeah, we'll talk more about Titans in a bit, I guess. We're just trying to catch up because, like, the last few weeks we've had guests and we've had people on, and we're just yeah. like, okay, we where do we go from here? Between, uh, you know, Jordan Elzass uh, two yeah. weeks ago from Superman and Lois, and then last week we had Chris uh, Pierre Domenico on mm-hmm. our on our show. Uh, so yeah, I, I was like, we have a lot of catching up to do. Probably one of the one of the biggest shows that we've really enjoyed watching over the last couple of weeks has been What If. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I haven't seen the last uh, couple ones, but I've heard a lot about them. And I don't really mind spoilers too much on the animated stuff because, honestly, it's it's not like it's going to lead into some huge epic thing. It's one episode, a one-off thing. So I don't know. It's still a story. It's not any less of a story than a movie. But for some reason, spoilers for those don't bother me as much right? as like a, a live-action show. or what, What's the last what-if that you saw? It was the what? Oh gosh, um, I'm a little behind on what if. Um, I know about what happened in the last two, but I'm trying to remember what the one before before the Doctor Strange episode. It was the um, so that was the one where what if there was no Avengers? Right? Yes, where all the Avengers got killed one by one, and it turns out it was um, now I forgot who it was. It was Hank Pym. Yes, Hank Pym. That's right. Hank yes, Pym. Yes. And, and I, I like. I really enjoyed sort of the the murder mystery element yeah. of that episode. Right. It was, you know, you were trying to figure out what is what is it exactly that's killing off Earth's mightiest heroes, um, and you know, one one by one they end up getting getting killed off. We had always wondered, you know, what what difference really did the Avengers make? when fighting Loki in that first movie. And that, and that, that what if really showed us just how close the world came to world domination. Right. Mm -hmm. And without the Avengers to fight Loki, um, we see how the world in a matter of days falls. Yeah. I mean, and I've seen, I haven't seen the other two episodes since that one, but I've seen clips and heard from people who have seen them Doctor Strange and like that whole thing sounds amazing. I don't know why I haven't watched that yet. Honestly, I need to. You need to get caught up. I'm gonna um, go ahead and drop. I'm gonna go ahead and drop spoilers for. That's uh, fine. Yeah. Those those next two. The one with Doctor Strange is, um, is what if what if Doctor Strange lost his heart instead mm-hmm. of his hands, right? Yeah. And what they what they show is that in in this timeline in the multiverse, um. Doctor Strange loses the love of his life. His hands are fine, but the woman that he loves dies. And so he goes and studies the mystical arts in the attempt to bring her back. Right? He okay. wants to bring her back from the dead. And in the process, he um, he uses the, the time stone to try to, to undo time and finds out that her death is a fixed point that he can't change. And so... He goes as dark as possible, trying to harness enough dark energy to go and undo a fixed point. And in the process, he becomes this horrible, terrible monster. And oh, wow. uh, ultimately brings about the destruction of the entire universe. Uh, again, that, that one was pretty dark. If you thought the Avengers uh, being dead was dark, the Doctor Strange one was even more so. Um, mm-hmm. That said, the uh, most recent episode of What If, probably the darkest of all five, in my opinion, um, and that one was uh, What If What if the Avengers all became zombies, right? Yeah, I've seen pictures of that, and I'm like, man, that's the one I really need to see. Yeah, it was, it was, bo- it was both terrifying. Um, there were some funny moments in it as well. Um, I think I thought it was directed by DC. Right, right. It, it definitely did seem like it was so dark. It was from the DC universe. It was dark. We're, right. I think what we're learning though is, you know, Marvel has always come across as being a little bit Disney, right? A little bit safe, um, maybe more kid friendly. And I think as time goes by, they're really, uh, you know, dipping their their big toe in the 
in the kiddie pool of, you know, being more adult, being more dark and edgy. Um, you know, in this one, they really didn't shy away from that. There was plenty of, of gore and, uh, but I, I loved the, um, kind of the youthful, the youthfulness of, of Spider-Man. He does the, the whole, uh, rules for surviving a zombie apocalypse <laughs> right so it's sort of like um um what's the kid's name um the lex luther from the mcu not mcu wow somebody slapped me <laughs> i'm looking at stan lee thinking marvel and i say mcu from the uh, dc movie uh, city universe the lex luther um what's that guy's name the actor that plays Lex Luthor. Um, um, wow, I'm ashamed of what? myself. So, Cryer? No, not John Cryer, but um, in the in the movie universe, the um, oh. um, the one that was really terrible and everybody hated. Um, why can't I think of that guy's name? Because he had the curly hair, and then like, oh yeah. Um, I can't remember his name, and I forget why I'm even talking about him. Not because of Lex Luthor in the movies, but like. He's in, he's in the um, zombie movie, right? Yeah, the zombie land. Yeah. And that's what I was thinking of. That's I mean, I can't remember the guy's name, so I like blanked out and then started fixating on the on right. the, the character. They were they yeah. were definitely, you know, paying an homage to that, absolutely, uh, with uh with this episode. But the idea that all of these characters that we love ultimately becoming, you know, zombies and even uh they they end up, you know, uh, going to New Jersey. Um, to hopefully they hear that there's a cure and they find out that uh, that vision has been luring people there um, to feed to Wanda uh, out of love and devotion to her. Uh, <laughs> that was a really terrifying twist. That's crazy. Yeah. I'll be honest out of all the five, probably my least favorite of the five um, just because of the ending. So I'll, I'll let you kind of, Jesse there Eisenberg. We go. There we go. Yes, thank you, Dell. That is why we. This is why we like <laughs> doing things live because yeah. we've got people out there that can give us information that we don't have time to look up ourselves. So, absolutely, thank you for that. And part of this is intriguing too because it's Facebook user. I know Kevin Spacey or Gene Hackman. Well, we found out it was Jesse Eisenberg, but yeah, those are good ones too. They really are. Gene Hackman's probably the number one Lex Luthor. He really is. He really I mean, is. Hard but to yeah. argue with that. I mean, what if is really great. I've only seen the first three. I think my least favorite is probably just the first one, just because it was like not not to take away from it. Like I think Captain Carter was cool. That was awesome. But like it really a lot of people have made the point that the first two episodes, I've heard this from multiple different people. So I'm not saying like, oh, it must be true. But I can kind of see now that multiple people are saying this, that the first two really didn't do a what if story. They just the only what if about it was what if this exact same thing happened, but it was this person instead. I think what they were really doing is if we had started with zombies at the very beginning, right? right and then we did, uh, you know, Captain Carter later on, it would have felt like a letdown, yeah. right? So what you do, you kind of start with Captain Carter and you kind of slowly build up. And mm -hmm. I think that's what they've been doing is they've been very intentional about how how they've paced this out. And I think it's really, I think it's really clever. The animated part, I, I was a little bit worried about how the animation was going to play out. However, yeah, I feel it's like so it's great. You, you think about because they animated it. Um, we, we keep hearing uh, Chadwick Boseman's voice come up. Yeah. Right. He keeps, he keeps popping up. I, and I love how, um, what if, has kept him alive even in this format. Um, I really do. I really do love that. And so it takes some risks. It really takes the universe that we've known and it's like put in a box and you know shaking it yep. up and spilled it out. And I I really I really enjoy the creativity of it. It really lets us know what could have possibly happened if some if, if even like one small thing had changed. So yeah. I think Del, that's really cool. Dell has a good point too. He's like the second one was good, and Thanos didn't destroy the universe. 
I mean, yeah, I like that. It was weird seeing uh, Thanos as a good guy. He was just sitting there like, hey, everybody, I'm Thanos. And then they were like, you can, he's like, oh, I'm sorry, I almost killed everybody. And then they're like, but you see that your plan was bad. He's like, no, it wasn't. I still agree with what I was thinking. I just, sorry that I almost killed you all. Like, But I still think it would have been a good choice. Right. I and think so, we, yeah. yeah. We definitely see how um, T'Challa, his, uh, not only was he inspirational to, the people of Wakanda, but to the universe, right? He becomes mm. this, this almost, uh, you know, moral savior figure. Um, I think that's, I think that's, I think it's awesome um, to, again, the memory of Chad with Bozeman. Um, I think it's a little bit of a slap in the face uh, to um, Peter Quill, right? A little bit. You know? Oh, it's working. Oh, now. Okay. Hey. There Thanks, we go. Corey. The only downside to this that I see is we can't, our listeners or viewers, I guess, can put their name. Basically, what's happening, I've learned throughout the show, is they can go in and give StreamYard permission. I don't know why it makes makes them do this in groups, but because on the page, it doesn't. But in groups, you have to give them their permission to use the picture and name. It's a weird privacy thing. The only downside to it is we, as a show, can't post comments. So, but anyway, I'm glad Corey's got his identity back. Um, right. <laughs> and in the comment, I, I actually, I actually accidentally showed Corey's comment because I didn't see it pop up. It popped up the second I was clicking. So Corey knew I was going to click because he has psychic powers. It's all right. coming together. Right. Um, but the Dell made a good point again. Howard the Duck, hilarious. I loved seeing Howard the Duck. I thought that was, I was like, they did Howard the Duck. Are you kidding me? That's awesome. Yeah, I always I mean, forget Howard the Duck is a Marvel character. I I do too. I never realized that he was. We used to watch the live okay. action Howard the Duck years and years ago, growing up, and uh, thought he was hilarious. Uh, never really thought that he kind of intersected at all. But it's kind of cool they've included him. So and a fun connection to Back to the Future with Howard the Duck because the, I can't remember her last name, but Leah whatever was you know Howard the Duck. She wasn't Howard the Duck, but she was in Howard the Duck. Wow. Um, and great Scott, she was Marty's mom, right? Even though this is Doc, right. not Marty, but still, I don't have a Marty, so <laughs> I, I get where you're going. I get where you're going with that. I think that's cool when you, yeah. when, you, when you sit and think about these connections of like this guy was in this, this person was in this, and oh, I like both of those. And yeah. that's another thing I know you haven't seen it, but I, I've always been like a wrestling fan growing up, and Stephen Amell is awesome. And you know, Arrow, the new show Heels, I can't stop thinking about it. Leah Thompson. Why couldn't I think of Thompson? One of the most basic names. Uh, anyway. Um, so if you are, if you're going to give me like a uh, 30 second, um, you know, reason why I should go and watch heels, right? Oh gosh. Why, why? I don't know if I can pin it down in 30 seconds, but try. It is really good. Boom. No, it's really good. <laughs> um, so there you know, we go. Just... I'm going to watch it now. The action, but not the action, but like the drama. Like Stephen Amell is a great actor, you know, and he, he's he's a really good dramatic actor as well as action. But it's really his dramatic scenes that give him like that, I don't want to say edge, but like he stands out and he's like really shines. He's believable. And then you throw in wrestling with it and it's the drama behind the world of wrestling. Not just like, oh, let's play a fight. Da, 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 da. But the drama behind it. There's, there's, you know, so many twists and turns. Just imagine Arrow without superheroes, but wrestlers. I mean, so it may not feel, be as dramatic as that, but do you, so you feel like Stephen Amell is essential to this show being successful? I think so, but could anybody else play it? Probably, but I think he adds a certain thing to it. It's like you can tell when he gets involved with something, he gets involved with it. He right. doesn't just go and be like time clock, okay, punch. <sighs> you failed the city. Well, you know, I think Fuck what out. helps. I think what helps um, Stephen Amell is the fact that you know he's a legitimate athlete. You know, he he went on to American Ninja Warrior and competed in that competition. Um, yeah, you know, and I so I, and I know that he also did, you know, professional wrestling. Yeah, um, you know, even prior to heels, while he was still, uh, you know, playing Arrow. I guess the question I, I want to know is: Do you think people that are not familiar with Stephen Amell? as green arrow or would find heels to be still um as good i think so i mean 
I think if you don't know who Stephen Amell is and you have no interest in wrestling at all, you could still enjoy the show. Okay. But, of course, those things are going to draw you to it. If you're a fan of one or both of those things, it's going to be like, oh, okay, it's going to be more appealing. Just like if you don't like comic books, never liked a superhero, you're not going to love comic books, but you might like a Marvel movie. You know, it's the same kind of idea that it's it's based about superheroes, and it's like, oh, this is cool powers. Look, we flying man, whoo! Um, <laughs> but it's not like all of it. You know, there's a story behind these characters, and and the the show. This is way longer than thirty seconds, but heels is really more about this dynamic between these two brothers. It's you know, their father left them this wrestling group that he's built in. 20 years, 30 years in the past. And now the older brother pretty much controls it. The younger brother's jealous. He's like, oh man, this is terrible. I should be the champion. Make me the champion tonight, please. No, you're not ready, but I am ready. And all these twists and turns in the, in the drama behind it. And each character is great. Each character has its own personality. There's not a lot of filler characters. There's some background characters. There's this and that. Um, it sort of reminds me of like, if Orange is the New Black wasn't women in prison, but guys wrestling okay i mean th that kind of like drama um there's not a lot of naked women running around because they're not in a female prison but i mean now let's talk about connections batwoman was in orange is the new black ruby bros yeah think about that one it's weird anyway sorry um <laughs> that was random it was yeah but, uh, but no, heels is just great. I mean, it's all about wrestling, yes, but it's more about the drama and more about the real lives of these people outside of wrestling. Right. And wrestling okay. is just that draw to like, hey, look what we do. But then look behind the curtain and like what we're really doing. I, I will tell you that okay, you've you've convinced me. Um I heels is on my list. So I'm gonna make sure that you uh, to go and watch that. It may um, be hard to find. I don't know, because it is on stars. Um, I watch it other ways, but I think it's on Hulu. I think he might be able to get it on Hulu because it might be one of those like things that Hulu and Stars work together with. Um, but it's definitely a great show. I mean, I'm yeah. going to buy the DVDs whenever they come out. All right. Well, talking about movies that you haven't seen yet, I think we had discussed the fact that you have yet to see Shang-Chi. I have yet <laughs> to see that, but I had to throw Corey's comment up there. How right. many arrows is he shooting to people's legs? No arrows in legs. No arrows. I think that no. this that's, that's like a, a missed opportunity. But their last name, the character's last name, is Spade. So okay. Spade is like the tip of an arrow. Right. So, I mean, and they hit people in the legs, so I guess you could say every episode. Right. Right. I mean, that's We, a we should make a recommendation about more arrows in legs. Yeah. That could be his character. But really? You failed this wrestling organization. Right. Um, that's yeah. terrible. But yeah, oh. I've not seen that film yet. I know right. I want to, but I haven't. Um, I just saw it again for the second time nice. here today. Um, really, really good movie. I, I walk walking into it. I had heard people who were already familiar with Shang Chi, and uh, they were they were just saying great things about the source material. Uh, but I had really zero expectations. And you know how it goes. You walk into a movie and you don't have any expectations. Uh, you really don't know what what you're getting yourself into. Right. Um, I really loved it though. Great origin story. They do a, a really fantastic job of connecting Shang Chi with the rest of the MCU. So he's not just doing the standalone movie, but they they show how he's connected, um, really to the mysticism that we see about Doctor Strange, um, mm. and the the action. A lot of the fight sequences. And the choreography, it reminds me a lot of something you'd see from, you know, the quickness of Bruce Lee, um, some of the cleverness okay. um, that you would see from you know, like a Jackie Chan kind of a situation, um, but really, really well cast. Um, and I think a great balance of seriousness and humor. Mm -hmm. And I, I do, again, if you haven't seen Shang-Chi, um, you know, I would, I would encourage you to do that. We were, we were talking about what MCU movies are your favorite. And even though it's relatively new out there, I've, I've put Shang-Chi probably number seven on my list out okay. of 23. So it's in the top third. 
I almost I mean I had an opportunity a couple of weeks ago to go watch it. And I was just like, well, I don't think I don't know. Because I wasn't familiar with the character and I, I really didn't want to go in expecting anything because I didn't know what to expect. I'm like, this character could be crap. It could be awesome. I don't yeah. even know. Yeah. I didn't know if it was like a like it to me it could have been if Hawkeye had his own movie. Like who would watch that? Maybe two people in the world would watch that movie. <laughs> Him, that's, Jeremy that's Renner, mean. and that's and then mean. you, maybe. Maybe you right. and the actor would be the ones watching it. Right. No, I, I mean, he's not that bad. But I didn't know what to expect. But yeah. I was like, oh, I, I guess, think I'll wait. I guess that Jeremy Renner and I could just go and watch the movie together. And that would be just fine with me. <laughs> I mean, this Corey's. I was reading Corey's comment before I posted it. But uh, Aquafina in it, I thought it was in the same universe as Crazy Rich Asians. So, okay. I didn't right. know. Yeah, I, I really didn't know who Aquafina was. Uh, I thought it was a brand of water. So, um, this yeah. isn't Aquafina, but it is. It is. Right. I thought uh, people were talking about Aquafina, and I didn't understand they were talking about the lead actress in the film. That but comment really, made me thirsty. Right. Right. <laughs> Oh, really? Thirsty, huh? Yeah. Um, if you're thirsty, go buy Aquafit. No, I'm just kidding. There we go. Right. So anyway, that is my that is my shameless plug for Shang-Chi. It is absolutely worth a watch and a rewatch. So. Okay, yeah. I mean, I'll definitely check it out. I mean, I know it's only in theaters right now. Um, so I may go on a Tuesday or something when it's like cheaper. I think Tuesdays are typically like the discounted, like cheaper days. Yeah. Go on Tuesday at like 11 a.m. or something like. You will not regret it. We'll talk about it next week. So. Hopefully, I get the chance. I mean, I, yeah. I I have nothing to do Tuesday that I can think of immediately. Um, nothing major anyway. So, I might be renting a car to go see my mom because I just feel like renting a car. And I was looking at the rental car stuff, and I was looking for a blue Nissan Versa because I just watched that episode of people. Well, not that episode. They they have that car in a lot of episodes, but. I, I, on Heroes, I wanted to talk about it just for a minute because I know we yeah. got more to cover. We, got, we need to cover Titans and a few other things. But with with Heroes, I, I still think my favorite I, my favorite character overall is got to be Hiro Nakamura because it's just the comedy behind him and like very serious. Like, oh, oh. and I, I love seeing his. That was terrible. I was like, ho, ho, ho. Um, just that his, so, his, that's when so he's, racist. But oh. he says that. I mean, I know. Um. Oh yes, I am Hito, but it's his progression of like in the very beginning he could barely speak English. She goes, "Oh, yata, I love New York," and that's all I can say. And in like the fifth not, episode, he yeah, he's like he's full of frying man, frying man, frying man. He's like, I know. Keep it down. He's like, frying man. <laughs> no, I, I, kaboom. I think that Hiro Nakamura in Heroes was like every every comic book fanboy right he he really d did channel people like us that that we how often do we do we kind of talk about or or you know um wish that we had superpowers right Fine, and here is, yeah and here is and here is hiro nakamura who is stuck in this cubicle job and and finds out that he <laughs> has the powers that he's always wished for I think that is really cool that we get to see his excitement and, and his real um, he becomes this, this character of hope and enthusiasm, enthusiasm mm -hmm. and, and idealism. Um, I think it, very similar to that. Um, I, I always liked Peter Petrelli. I yeah. Think Peter, that, I think Peter's the star of that show. At least the first season. Now it's arguable that, that um, Noah Bennett is like the, the main character or Claire really, but Peter is like the, the core of it all. If Peter doesn't care, then well, she's dead really. Yeah. And that's the first time when like that scene, I just watched that episode like today, this morning when Peter falls off the um, Siler pushes him off the, the clock tower uh, or not, maybe not clock tower, but the thing, save the clock tower. Um, <laughs> the, um, whatever that was, a school or the building, whatever. And he's laying there and you're like, you see the painting early on, but then you see it happen. You're like, Oh, and it originally goes to commercial, which I didn't watch it on live TV, but 
it has that black break and that fade. And then you're like, what? And then it comes back and you're just like, he's dead. But then he gets up right away. First time we see him do anything other than flying, really. Oh, well, wait, no, he painted the future the one time um, and all that. But like any, that's not a, I mean, it's a real power, but it's not like a, a crazy like, oh, I just loved how many turns that that character could take because he could literally do anything. And it was funny because I just had this conversation on the phone with my mom earlier tonight before coming on about how Claire Bennett died. Because I actually started watching Heroes with my mom. And we got them at, uh, on DVD at the library. And we would check one season out at a time and binge watch them like all day. And then we finally finished it. We're like, well, that sucks because it ended up to be continued. Yeah. But, I mean, I never watched the show live. Um, I think I was too focused on watching like wrestling or something like that at the time. I was so hooked on that stuff. But then when I watched it later, it's one of those shows that I always regretted not watching when it was new because it was so good. And I had a conversation with her and I, I think we might've chatted about this in the original group that we met on. And I don't know if I ever found an answer or if I was proven wrong or if, I don't know, it's been so long ago. It's almost eight, nine years ago. But could Claire have actually died? This is going into Heroes Reborn, where she's not alive anymore. But could she have died? Because you know we all know that that have seen that show know that her the twin, well the, she had two, two two twins. Clearly, that's what twins are: a boy and a girl. And the boy who was well, I forget what his the original name was, but they ended up calling him Nathan. Right, that was his name, like his actual name or something. Right, Tommy and. Tommy and Nathan, yeah, Tommy slash Nathan, yeah. He actually absorbed Claire's power, but his his power was more like uh, Arthur Petrelli, where you touch him, you permanently have it. They don't have it anymore. But he was also like Peter, where he can only use one at a time. And so he took her healing when she was pregnant. She died in childbirth, and then she couldn't come back to life because she had no power. But I was always wondering, how could she have gotten pregnant in the first place? Because wouldn't her body go, oh, no, something's attacking me. I'm going to heal. And then couldn't be pregnant. I don't know. It's just a rant. It's like the Savitar thing for me. I know. I just get looped. She couldn't die. She couldn't die. I mean, I think the point the point for me is the fact is she did get pregnant. Yeah, uh, she did. So it, the fact that she did get pregnant negates the argument that she couldn't get pregnant. Right. The fact, right. The fact that she did. Uh, and and she died in the process. Um, what if she didn't get pregnant? Dun dun dun. No. Right. Yeah, and I get it. Like at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what the science behind what, what fictional science I could argue because what happened happened. Right. That's what wonder, finally it got me over the sabotage thing. Right. Right. I, I guess the big thing for me. Do you ever wonder what was it about heroes that really grabbed us back then? Yeah, because like honestly, it really should have been boring. We should have had no interest in it because you had all these people that were just like, I know, I am Hino Nakamura. I am from Tokyo, Japan. I like waffles. Woo-hoo-hoo. <laughs> How is he interesting? He's, he's funny. So maybe that's a bad example. Some high school cheerleader. Oh, she can heal herself, but she's still boring. She's a boring. They didn't have like Batman costumes, the wicked capes and all this like and all this stuff. They were just normal people. Right. Well, maybe not normal because Nathan Petrelli is not normal. You know, none of them were normal, but they were generic heroes without costumes, without any reason. They just were heroes. Right. And I think that's what a lot of people at first, you're like, that's boring. But when you watch it, it's more relatable. I think part and, of it, yeah. Part, part of it was, was at, at the time, there weren't a lot of shows that were doing this. That that kind of storytelling, right? Mm -hmm. um, where you'd get, you you you'd spend five minutes with one character and then cut, and five minutes with another character and then cut, and then five minutes with another character. And for me, I'm like, what is it that connects all of these different things together? And yeah. I think I think that whole puzzle game for me made it interesting. I wanted to see how it all fit together. Yeah, uh, I mean that's part of the show. Like it was it was. So many different things. There was comedy with hero. Right. There was, you know, mystery. How does it all connect? Uh, the thing was Mr. Isak with the paintings. You wondered as a fan, just like, 
what's that last painting? Nathan, you asshole. Why did you do that? Like, why did you ruin that painting? We'll never yeah. know what happened. So, like, I, so many yeah, elements. There was. And I think ultimately the show became an opportunity for us to have real dialogue, to have real discussion. You know, for whatever reason, I wasn't going in and having conversations like that about other shows that I was watching. But right. Heroes was the one that really got both of us talking. Yeah. A um, lot of friendships that I had made in that Heroes fan group um, mm -hmm. that I that I still have that I'm still in contact with today. And so mm -hmm. yeah, I, I we certainly credit that with um, kind of the beginning of our friendship and ultimately this podcast uh, yeah. because of Heroes. So that's cool. I mean, yeah, because without Heroes or any of the other stuff, any other shows, I, this podcast might have existed still, but it would have just been me going like, well, today I got a new action figure <laughs> and I watched TV. It would be boring. I probably would have stopped doing it by now. Right. Um, honestly. Uh, but Heroes is so good and it doesn't get old. It holds up because watching it now, I don't know how long it's been, probably a good two years at least since I'd watched the whole show through, maybe even three years. And I'm almost to the end of the first season, Luke, because Siler had killed Charlie. Hero went back in time, got stuck in six months ago, and then stuck in six months ago. Well, you know what I mean. And then right. Peter shows up. Peter dies, comes back to life. Siler escapes. Claire's all bloody, like, Dad, I can actually heal. And, like, he finds out what well, she already knew the whole time, but she's telling him. That's right when it's about to go really crazy and really good at the end, like the last few episodes. And I forget what season two, three, and four were like. I know four was the last one, I believe. And that was a crazy carnival with everybody and, and that whole thing. But two and three, I'm like, it's kind of a blur. It's been so long since I've seen the show. I don't remember. I know bits and pieces. But so you, Two and three was really about, um, we we have this horrible future, right? They, they had survived the explosion yeah. in New York City, but now there's this... Now there's this disease that's that's threatening the world. That's right. They're trying to stop that from happening. You got um, you got Adam, um, you know, hero going back to feudal Japan. Um, yeah. All of all of those kinds of things that we that we really see, um, even the behind the scenes at Primatech. And so, yeah. Um, I, I, again, I I really enjoy it, even for even for all of its. Um, missteps and and there and there were a couple. I still think that it holds up. Uh, it's as a good show. It really does. And we were talking about this earlier in the group, um, this group right here um, that you all are watching us on. Uh, and a few people had said, you know, that the first season was amazing, and then the second one, third one, they didn't like it, or it wasn't as good. I I still think I loved all of them, but the first one really was special. Right. Because it was the way they did it. The second, third, and fourth season still kind of showed you bouncing between characters. And it still had all those different elements. But that mystery of, like, what's going to happen wasn't quite the same. I mean, they still had it, but it was, like, it was different. Um, I will say season one is probably my favorite season. Um, then it might be one, two, three, four in that order as far as my favorite seasons. Um, although four was pretty good. Because they had so many different things, and Samuel like controlling the dirt. I remembered his name, but I couldn't remember Leah Thompson. Um, anyway, uh, it's he Heroes is good. If yeah. you guys haven't seen Heroes, go watch it right now. Um, it's on. It's on Peacock actually. Um, all four seasons now. Heroes were born. I don't think it's on there, but which wasn't you know. The, the, I don't know what bugged me about Heroes for Born so much, but when when the kid would teleport, he had to do this to teleport. Like, why do you have to touch yourself to teleport? I never understood that, but I don't know. And I was mad that I, Hero I, got stuck I, in time. Right. I think he just liked it. That's why he did it. And now, oh my gosh, I just realized this is what started it, it, the show and Heroes Were Born, like all those shows, those two shows together, really what, uh, what got us talking about heroes in general and shows like this. But it also was the first time I got stuck in a mind loop, I think, because Hiro Nakamura and Heroes Were Born could not have been there to, to be his stepdad, but he was there, but he wasn't there, but he was there. But he, Okay, never mind. Moving on. 
That was before Savitar. I know, Stephen. I like. I, I just want to warn you. Um, <sighs> you know, don't let this. Don't take it too far. No, no. I, I, you know, I've, and I, I don't know why. For whatever reason, I just kind of accept that it happened, and I get over it. Um, you know, for whatever reason, it makes sense to the writers, and so I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, that's it. I get it. I just, I just get stuck in that. What if, right? It were the reality that it was supposed to be before this event happened, which is what what if is. But, but yeah, I don't know. I, I can accept it. I'm not gonna get stuck in that loop again because, right. you know. After Savitar, I was just like, I don't have the emotional like energy or or mental capacity to like sit here and figure this out because I never will because it's impossible. So I'm gonna stop trying. I, when I was younger, I used to think that I could jump without jumping. Like you know, you can stand there and move one leg up or the other leg up, but I'm like, why can't I just do this without actually jumping? Because gravity. Yeah. But when yeah. I was a kid, I was like, one day I'm going to do it. One day I'm going to do it. I knew I would fall over. I figured it would go. I figured it would be like a cartoon where, you know, where Roadrunner is like chasing Coyote and Coyote goes off the cliff. He's like, and then he's like, and not until he looks down does he fall. I thought it would be like that when I was a kid. I don't know. But I think every kid goes through that phase where they have to figure <laughs> things out. Like I remember that I, I think I might have jumped off the roof trying to slow my descent with a plastic bag, um, which didn't oh, wow. work, by the way. Yeah, it was not a good idea. Um, you know, just things that you learn that you're, you learn your limitations or you, know, you go, well, that was really stupid. It, well, when I was a kid, I didn't jump off a roof with a plastic bag. Um, I did think that from watching Gilligan's Island, doing this would make you fly. So I didn't try to jump off of anything, but I stood still and was like, I'm going to, if I do it fast enough, like, but it didn't work. Um, I'm not a flying man. But uh, when I was a kid, my mom told me when I go in the snow to put grocery plastic grocery bags over my feet so that my socks don't get wet. So, yeah. Okay. I take a grocery bag, put it over my shoe, tie it, go outside, <laughs> fall, <laughs> fall. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, well, I put grocery bags on my feet, like you said, not on your shoes, on your socks inside your shoes. Oh. Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> But something we haven't talked about yet to kind of change gears is Titans. Yeah. We, we haven't really gone over Titans yet. How are you are you caught up with Titans? <clears throat> I am. And we also have to get to our little list of there's a question that was brought to my not brought to my attention, but it was asked of me, like if you could pick an all female cast for like an expendables type movie, who would you pick? So we're gonna get to that too. We right. both have our lists. All right. Um, I'm looking at mine. Ooh. Let's let's do uh let's go ahead and do Titans first and Titan. then We'll do our Expendables cast list yes. before we call it a night. So um, let's see. I don't know where we left off. I think the big thing in Titans was getting that real backstory about how Jason Todd becomes Red Hood, which, yeah. by the way, I think that episode was by far my favorite episode. Um, uh -oh. Yeah, Corey, you better not bring that one up. Right, <laughs> that will get you ejected from the group. Oh no! Yeah, you're back to Facebook user. Really, you will be Facebook user permanently. You get a lifetime ban. So, um, Great yeah, I know. Seriously, um, no, but but uh, Jason Todd's transformation into Red Hood. Um, yeah. I think a lot of people had said that his transformation happened too fast. Right. Yeah. When we first saw it, it seemed like literally he was Jason Todd one minute and the next minute he's Red Hood. And then we find out mm -hmm. that there had actually been like a three month gap in between. So there had been development. And I think even. Um... Uh -oh. <laughs> um, don't do it, Corey. No. It'll create a, a time anomaly. I don't, I don't know. But yeah, sorry. <laughs> that was just I funny. Know. I had to pop it up there. Right, right. Um, anyway, that was my favorite episode of, of that whole thing. I think, mm -hmm. I think the biggest surprise, and we've talked about it in the group, has been, uh, you know, Dr. Crane, right? Uh, yeah. Scarecrow. People had said, oh, he's not clever enough to be the mastermind behind all of yeah. this. He's just and, some a lazy stoner who doesn't care as much right. as anybody thought. And I think perhaps the truth is that he's both, yeah. right? That that he enjoys that 
that interplay of making people think that he's not clever enough to be the mastermind. Mm-hmm. Definitely, uh, yeah. definitely, Jason thought that he could get what he wanted from Crane, and at the same time, still be in charge. Yeah, and, uh, we find though that Crane plays Jason masterfully. You know, Jason. Oh, yeah. Jason's desperate for a father figure and a mentor. He wants to finally live without fear, and Crane provides him with that opportunity. And in, in, in effect, he essentially kind of sells his soul to the devil. And the devil is very tricky because yeah. you know he, he literally had Jason tied up, chained to a, a chair, and wouldn't let him move until he needed him. And he was showing him who, who the boss was. And he gets out of the chair and he's like, oh, yeah, watch this. And he like huffs the uh, anti-fear toxin. And then he's like, wait a minute, wait a minute, what did you do? And he like falls down because he realizes, oh, wait, I can't do this because he has one up on me already. He's a step ahead of me. I'm not as smart as I think because he it, it's revealed that he well not revealed. Everybody already knew it, but he's still afraid of Dick Grayson. And so Scarecrow used that. He's like, you're going to be so fixated on like getting revenge or whatever that he's not going to see this coming. He was a perfect person to manipulate. And I thought, I, I don't, I don't want to say it was predictable, but I, I always thought he was being manipulated. And, and yeah. the group is like, no, he wasn't. Scarecrow's not smart enough. Like, he totally is. Right. Yeah, even, even smart enough that he had been able to go and um, hack Oracle – yeah, and essentially get Dick and Barbara to uh, shut Oracle down permanently. Mm-hmm. So, again, I mean, the guy is the guy is a mastermind. I think it it makes him a worthy adversary, um, you know, for for the Titans. I still think that they're gonna find a way to bring Oracle back, and I think that might be like they might like trick everybody. I think maybe the audience might even be tricked on this one. I think maybe Oracle is not really hacked. Maybe he just somehow sent a video signal to make them think it would. Well, he he was in their video feed, sure, but I don't think he was in control of Oracle. And he might have manipulated them into destroying Oracle, not because he was controlling it, but because he wanted them to think that. Right. Well, but I think I, it could be brought back too. Right. I think definitely Jason Todd telling, uh, you know, Doctor Crane everything. Right. Yeah. He, you know, he gave him the keys to the castle, literally, and. Uh, you know, uh, Crane has certainly used that to his advantage. I, I, in my opinion, I think that the one problem with characters like Stephen Crane is their overconfidence. Right? They're they're yeah. so full of of bravado and overcome by their intelligence. They think they're so far ahead of everybody. They get sloppy, and I they think really that's essentially, you know, even even what we saw in this last episode where the Titans come in and thwart his plans. And he realizes that, um, you know, he he realizes they've they've kind of stopped him for the first time so far in the show um, because he got overconfident. Yeah, and I think like at the end of it, Barry and Iris are going to come in and tell him it's okay, it's okay. We love you. You're our friend. <laughs> now go through this portal that Cisco made, and then be happy and free. So it, I think it's I think it's I think it's funny that you bring that up. If this were taking place on the CW on the Flash, oh. you would definitely get Iris and Barry hugging it out, right? It would be it would just be you know it's okay, Scarecrow, we love you anyway. Uh, hug this pillow and it's gonna be all right. Um, I I think though that we've we definitely understand that the Titans are not that kind. They're not gonna no. talk. They're not about talking things out. I, if if you don't get that idea, um, we had that that part. There's Starfire, and uh, she, Starfire, and um, and Beast Boy get manipulated into going and getting this criminal crime boss's son brought mm-hmm. back. They think to reconcile them, and the minute the the young man gets brought in before his mother, she shoots him in the forehead, yeah. and. Uh, <laughs> And we see that uh, that star that uh, the Starfire grabs the woman's hand and literally burns her to ashes, right? Yeah. Out of a sense of justice um, for being made complicit in his murder. Uh, 
But that's the kind of show Titans is, right? Mm -hmm. they, they weren't going to talk her back, right? Uh, she was going to kill no. her. <laughs> we definitely see that. Even even Beast Boy, who's kind of known to be pretty, uh, you know, peaceful and having a moral code, he has no problems in tearing people apart when he's in his tiger form, right? Not at all. And I love yeah. how he, did, he made the tiger like. Did he make a hand and not the rest of his body where he was using the senses of the tiger without think, being in tiger form? I think what we're noticing him do is he's playing with different ways to use his abilities. Mm -hmm. You know, I think already in his mind, he's been challenged that he's, that there's more to him than just transforming into one thing. That right. He can transform into others. And I think that once he starts to believe it himself, he's going to be able to do that. That's where he's going but they're really slowly developing that out. And as Corey says, I'll be your lightning rod. So the, I, I see how this is going to end. Right. Beast Boy is going to shapeshift into Barry and Iris. Yes. And then go. you see where that's going. It is. Absolutely. Uh, I, I've got to say, I like this uh, dynamic that they're playing with, uh, with Starfire and Blackfire. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we're, I think we're seeing interesting how this how this whole world of gray um starfire is not the goody goody we all think she is no. she has this really dark sense of justice and blackfire um she's been a, a little bit of a victim in, in yeah. things as well and so is she wicked absolutely is she dangerous absolutely is she somebody you probably shouldn't trust or turn your back on absolutely is she as bad as we've all been led to believe? Not mm -hmm. necessarily. Um, and, I, and I think that's interesting. I definitely think it's going to be interesting to seeing um, if this whole, they, they seem to be setting up some kind of relationship between her and Connor. Um, yeah. which I think could be um, interesting, I think also. So um, I'm kind of, I, I'm curious uh, Connor seems like like such a little child, so very innocent. Um, yeah. Cue musical number two. Right, <laughs> yeah. right. I know uh, some women. Disney movies. Movies. Absolutely. Uh, I think that's good. I think the one thing that I need from this show, and I think a lot of people do, is some characters have really been relegated to the sidelines. Right. We don't yeah. get a, we don't get enough moments for for Superboy. We we don't get enough moments for for Beast Boy. Crypto, um, yeah, mean. Oh, right. Crypto speak. We need more of that, um, and I think that's coming. Um, it is because we haven't even seen Raven Rachel yeah. at, at all, and then it's like what halfway over the season or something like that, or a third of the way. But you know that's that's going to be a big storyline at the end. I think I don't know much about it, and and the Titans group. There's tons of people talking about like this is this and this is going to happen but like i don't know but th she's definitely going to be there at some point we've seen yeah. her be on set from set photos and we know that there's trailers with her in them and i don't I, know yeah i think the truth is that in order for them to to build the backstory and build the characters up we have to understand that that some characters are going to be in the spotlight sometimes and some mm -hmm. won't be so I just know that it's coming. I'm excited about that. I really, I really like the show. Um, I, I know some people have said they didn't really care for seasons one and two, but I think I both them. of those are great. So, um, you know, one of the things we've always talked about on the show here is how we really are, we really are fans of these shows, both the comics mm -hmm. and um, and the TV shows and such. Um, and I, I just really celebrate the ability of us to be able to watch. Um, I like the darker take. Oh, oh yeah, characters. and that's I think pretty awesome. I love it, and like I said, the first time, like you were like, watch Titans. I was like, ah. and I watched the first episode, and as soon as I heard "fuck Batman," I was in. Right. <laughs> it was not because I hate Batman or anything. It was just because like I knew what the show meant at that point. I was like, yeah. okay, this is not Teen Titans. This is not your typical superhero show. This is real. Yeah. Like, not really real, but it feels real. Like it hits in a different way than all these other shows combined. Well, and I think that's what and that's what it, that's what HBO allows them to do is yeah. to, is to kind of take it in a more adult direction. Just like 
uh, just like Doom Patrol uh, kind of takes um, the superhero genre and turn it on its side, right? That they're able to take that show in as crazy a direction as possible. I think you, I think you'd make the argument Doom Patrol is crazier than even DC's Legends of Tomorrow. And um, it's funny they mentioned Legends because, like, I thought about it. I was like, I forgot that that happened, and I thought we could talk about that for a second if you wanted to, or if you've seen it. Because I, you know, I haven't, I, and I feel okay. I feel bad because no, it's fine. Um, you know, we we generally only talk about the good stuff, yeah. and I have, I'll be honest and say, I just have zero interest in DC's Legends of Tomorrow. Oh no! I know, I know that's terrible. It's terrible. I was kicked from the group. I know. Enough. I've been ejected from the podcast. Oh um, man! I know. I, mean, I get it. I get it. I, I've I've watched it just because it's habit. I, I know. I, I don't mean, want. I feel like there's there's so much good stuff that's out there, and um, I don't have time to go and watch stuff that really doesn't. I feel. I just feel like it's lost its way. Yeah. The show. I mean, it's fun. It's still fun to watch. No, we're never going to get Legends of Tomorrow guests. I know. No, it's not. Or it's maybe, not. or maybe they need to come on the show and tell us why we need to keep watching it. Right? You're like, in thirty seconds, tell me why I should watch your show again. Yeah, right. It is I, good. I mean, I might watch it again if they decide to to come on and, you know, uh, be guests on the show. I, I get it. I mean, I won't go too much into it, but like John Constantine is is you know has exited the show, and they kind of tie that storyline up. Um, I didn't realize I was watching the finale of the season. Um, but yeah, it, it was good. I mean, it's it, the ending of this season had more of a darker, almost like a season one vibe to it. The last couple episodes. And I was like, okay, maybe that's why I got so much into the ending in that last episode, because I was like, okay, this feels good. This is like a battle. This is cool. But, um, but yeah, legends is, is fun. Yeah. I get I, it I, though. I mean, I, I was, I was the same way with Supergirl. I didn't watch Supergirl for like two years. Because I was just like not in it anymore. I actually, I think I need to catch up on. The, okay, it comes on tonight. Actually, here it already came on, but I I will watch it sometime tomorrow as well as uh no wait Supergirl comes on Tuesdays now right? It does. Oh, why yeah. am I thinking Sunday? It used to come on Sunday. Right. Yeah. And, Supergirl uh, comes on after after Star Girl. It was Legends that came on Sundays. Right. And then they just ended last week. So. But we also have our lists to talk about. We um, do, we do. So this I'm is like, a, look at mine, but it's just a glowing. Yeah, I can't see anything on your on yeah. your screen. Um, I kind of wish we were able to still type and put on the screen here. Um, that bugs me still, but it's okay. Um, at first I was like, okay, what do I do? How do I make this list of people? Because like you, we mentioned before, I think coming on the air. Or maybe we mentioned it after going on the air, but it's like a random list of female actors. Right. You're just like, okay, here, 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 here. But then you're like, wait a minute, that that wouldn't be fitting. <clears throat> because with the Expendables, you had so many like action heroes. And then some that weren't actually like technically action heroes, but they were like MMA fighters or whatever. And okay, these people are badass. That would be awesome in a movie. And the Expendables yeah. are great movies. Yeah. I mean, so let, me, awesome. let me give my let me give my list. Um, okay, and just you have, just kind of use your imagination. Uh, I I started my list with Uma Thurman. Um, I, I yeah. love her in Kill Bill. I think that that she has that that great balance of you know being a I think a, a dramatic slash action movie um, actress. Um, Charlize Theron. Okay, um, that's a good one. I really I really like her. Uh, Angelina Jolie. Mm-hmm. Um, I threw uh, Margot Robbie in there. Um, oh, that's a good one. We we've just seen how how she can really do the physical comedy, as well as you know she really is a badass. Um, I, and then I thought we needed to have uh, you know two older actresses in there just for to make things interesting. Uh, Sigourney Weaver, um, I, I threw in there, and then uh, Helena Bonham Carter for a little bit of craziness. So oh wow, that's. That's my list. Um, well, see, for me, I just like at first I was I was just going through a random list of people, and then I would be watching things, and it would influence it. Like, 
that lady from the dog food commercial or whatever. <laughs> right. <clears throat> she was badass. Save. Um, the first one I thought of was Linda Hamilton, who played Sarah Connor in the Terminator movies. Um, mostly because like I thought of her in the last Terminator that, that just happened what, a couple of years ago. And a lot of people were like, that was the worst Terminator movie ever. Which, I mean, I don't mind it, but I can see why a lot of people didn't like it. It was more of a reboot. I enjoyed it. I thought it was yeah. good. I thought it was good, but it, it did seem kind of, I don't want to say pointless, but I, I've heard good points of like, the badass female was already in there. They didn't need another one. And, but it it was more of a the passing of the torch kind of generation gap thing. But if they don't do more of them, it may feel pointless because that movie could have happened without the younger girl right. being there. But that aside, like I thought the movie was great. Seeing John Connor killed in the beginning of it, was weird because they uh, surgically, I was going to say surgically when they uh, CGI'd his face, Edward Furlong's face onto John Connor as like the teenage John Connor. That was, that felt so weird and creepy. And like, you could tell his body was smaller than it was in the original T2. And so it's like, at least get a guy that's like a more appropriate height. Cause he didn't seem like a teenager. He seemed like a little kid but with the face of like a 40 year old man, it was weird. I don't know, but it was nice to see that story like kind of close up or, you know, at least move forward. So I thought of her and then I thought, you know, I can't, I don't know her name, but uh, the actress who plays uh, uh, Dove on Titans. Oh yeah. I thought mostly because, Oh, she's a superhero, but I think she's got the look of like, she could fight. If, if even if I didn't see her in a costume fighting on TV, I think she, you know, she has that that look. I don't know. Um, of course, I put Ruby Rose because I thought she was like tough, just because she was Batwoman. And then I also thought of her in uh, Orange Is the New Black. You know, women's prison, tough. We got to fight to survive. Like she just felt like she would be one of those names. Um, then I threw in Betty White. Okay, because you have to have Betty White in everything. And my uncle was like, Betty White, why? I wouldn't see her as like an action type. I'm like, no, but like, imagine Betty White dressed as like Rambo with like the paint and like, come on. Or she's like the receptionist at the super, at the, at the um, action hero office or whatever, where they all meet to like go over the plan. Well, you know, it's funny you bring that up because I, I had really considered um, putting like uh, Helen Mirren on my list. Okay. Which I, I think she is. She's you know that she has that that um that British spy actress kind of thing down. I uh, I had I really had gotten she at least was a consideration. I didn't put her on there. I actually she's on there, but I crossed it out. But right. same kind of thing, older actress, even even uh, Judy Dench, I played with that one too for a little bit. I was thinking, yeah, I was thinking Judy Dench as well. And I told my uncle, he's like, Why? No. <laughs> because she's awesome. Um, by the way, the actress that plays uh, uh, Dove, it's uh, Minka Kelly. Right. I cannot remember her name, and I didn't write it down in time. Corey, stop, or my mom will shoot. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just thought of Betty White, because when I thought of her, I honestly thought of her as a Stan Lee type thing, where she would just be there for a second and be like, Oh, hello. Like, whatever. Um, and then, of course, I had Angelina Jolie as well. Um, and then I had Ronda Rousey, who's, you know, the who was the female UFC uh, fighter. And she was in professional wrestling a little bit. Yeah. Um, I think she would be great. And I, she might have actually already been in Expendables. Or was she? I can't remember. I I think she was. Or there was a woman in one of them. There, I can't there are a couple of movies that she's been in. Yeah. Um. I think it's it's amazing how quickly though she flamed out, right? She like really there did. Was, yeah, for a while everybody was talking about Ronda Rousey. She loses one time, and uh, she gives it and up. She she does, but then again, like she kind of like brought that back when she entered like the wrestling world because she right. was pretty big for like a year and pretty hot topic, and then uh, she just kind of like faded off. Yeah. I think she. I think maybe she was like, it's time to have a family. It's time to, to chill out and. But still, she could be a badass in a movie. I think um, she could. I, I think what we realize here is that if every if every person on your list here 
is exactly the same, right? They're all yeah. big, strong action characters. It gets boring. You need to have you need to have different different kinds of mm-hmm. ability, right? You've got uh, the intellect, the strength, uh, the clever, uh, the crazy. I think that that having that brings some variety. Um, you know, that's what makes a, a team of of women. Uh, I think potentially far more, you know, dangerous. I don't want to get myself in trouble here, right? But <laughs> I think potentially um, putting together a, a group of women, um, you know, making it could be far more dangerous uh, than a group of, of guys uh, mm-hmm. be, just because of the the variety that you get from them. So... Yeah, and the rest of my list, I had a few more names, but it was mostly people like Gal Gadot and like all these superhero women that I'm just thinking of, like who are who are superheroes, who are superheroes, right? right. And um, the one, I mean, of course, uh, it was the same reason, but uh, Hayden Pinatier, who was Claire on uh, Heroes, <clears throat> she was I, I named her because I'm currently watching Heroes, obviously, but she actually did have a range in that show. In the first season, she was just like. Got to do it. Um, not a cheerleader, but closest thing I have. Like, oh, hello, Dad. Can I have a big, long piece of paper to make a banner for school? Yay, tra-la-la-la-la. Um, she went from that to being this badass, like, spy agent kind of right. thing by the end of season four. So she had this huge range of, of abilities as far as, like, acting and showing the different sides of her. So I think she would be great in, like, an action movie where she has no powers, just guns, like, pow, 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 come on. Um, you know, I think it'd be great. Yeah. Maybe she fights Betty White. Who knows? Um, but yeah, that I think that would be a cool thing. Like, I would love to see a, 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 a... And in today's world, in today's day and age, and, uh, you know, society and all that stuff, uh, an all-female cast is probably a great time to do it. You know, I, I really hope that they do something like that. And we were, it was just a what if kind of topic, but it'd be really awesome to see like some of the people we mentioned in like a, a action type heist, maybe movie something, you know, Michelle Rodriguez was actually on my list too okay. from Fast and the Furious, which those movies are basically heist movies by this point, but they're still good movies. Um, But yeah, that's kind of that topic i don't know really what else you can say about it like you said no no i feel like we've we've really covered um you know a a pretty exhaustive list here (laughs) heroes heels shang chi titans um what if uh and expendables that's that's pretty impressive oh okay i was just looking at this picture and i see stan Stan lee Lee. yeah he was doing the spider-man thing to people when I first saw this picture, I thought he was giving that fan the finger. Oh, no. I was like, why would he do that? Don't do that, Stan. Why? Uh, yeah, I mean, this this is an amazing book. I need to finish reading this. Um, and, yeah, heels. Go watch heels. Um, everybody. And, and Shang-Chi. Yeah, and that too, if you have time. Um, <laughs> it's gonna be no, no. I can't say that because I don't know. It, it's probably really great. I'm not giving it enough credit because I haven't. Okay, Corey, if if Laura Winslow is your action movie, um, name idea, then maybe she could be the villain. But I would not see Laura Winslow as a hero because she is the worst TV character in the history of television. She was the meanest because she was so bad to Steve. Oh, Steve, go home. I hate you. You're stupid. You're, you know, I hate you and all that stuff. And then at the end of it, she was all lonely because, like, nothing worked out for her. She's like, Steve, are you still bored? And just, like, emotionally used him all that time. So shame on Laura Winslow. Until Steve got all cool and sexy. And then she couldn't get enough of Stefan. Yeah, and they were the same person. I was going to say maybe he had something downstairs, but I mean, like, this is the same guy, so. Right. I'm pretty same sure. I'm pretty sure. In the yeah. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, maybe. A weird turn. You know what? I know. Maybe we should start calling you Stefan Colton. Yeah. I'll come in maybe, here with, like. Maybe that might change your whole. Uh, 
persona. Like, I don't like toys anymore. <laughs> I have a bathroom. I'll look like Hugh Hefner, basically. There we go. A Hugh Hefner, Stefan Colton. What if Stan Lee created Naked Magazines and Hugh Hefner wrote comic books? Now, that would be a twist. Yeah. <laughs> or what if Stan Lee and Hugh Hefner <laughs> work together on comic books? <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> I mean. I know. Partners in life, partners in comic books. And both men are both gone. Oh. That's sad. Not that Hugh Hefner, I mean, Hugh Hefner was kind of sad because he built a legacy and like this and this and pop culture, but like comic books are way better than pornography. I'm just saying. That was a weird statement to make. I know. But, I know. I mean, th there's more entertainment to it, I guess. I mean, it's like, oh, a picture in a magazine or a story. Just saying. I got to shut up shut up now because I'm just going to make it weirder and weirder and weirder. <laughs> I know. I feel like here's the shovel. Keep digging. I think I hit rock. What is this? Right. Oh, it's I know. a treasure chest. What's it's China. Chest? It's China. And then they're over there like, yo, but that stop. Shut up. Go back home. <laughs> oh, gosh. They don't want me either. So. Oh. All right. I think this is probably a good place for us to stop. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's a, it's a good place. I was going to try to cut it short tonight, but then I got so into it and it was having right. I was having fun and it just we we really had a lot to cover. So yeah, I, we really did. Yeah. And it's always funny because like I may be having a rough day sometimes or whatever, and then I get on here and I forget, and I'm just like, oh, let's just keep talking about Spider Man or whatever, or let's keep playing with Doc Brown. And right. I, wow that that sounded really weird too. <laughs> I mean that look on his face says it all. It really does. It really it's a far off look. <gasps> but um okay I'm putting that down. Uh yeah no, it's been I mean, a lot of fun. No, I think we we've we've talked about how this is sort of you know cheap therapy, right? Yeah, I mean it really is. Yeah. I, I enjoy the podcast. It's something that you know neither of us have to necessarily put money into, but we spend time on and I think that we find value in it. We hope that other people, you know, equally see the value in it. Uh, mm -hmm. so absolutely. Now this is going to be a weird part because this is the part where we normally throw up our Twitter handles and I physically can't do that. Uh, for some reason that it won't let me post comments. So, um, I'll just go ahead and say them. So Mark Guggenheim, of course, is the guy who sponsors this podcast. He's a good dude. Um, I want to say he's a friend. I mean, because we'll, you know, we'll talk occasionally and check in and like, how you doing? Um, and he's been a cool, he's been a cool guy. He supported the show a lot. He's helped us get in contact with some people and it was really be, like partially because of him that we had, uh, Jordan Nell's ass. Yeah. Now, we had reached out to Jordan directly and he kind of continued the discussions back with us, but we got in touch with his people and, and these other people and, and all because of Mark. So we got these relationships that we're building and it's, it's, Amazing. So you can follow him at M G U G G E N H E I M. I hate spelling. I feel like I'm on a weird episode of Sesame Street. Like, okay, right. Marty, Marty, I'll take over from here. We have, no. Um, I feel like asking if I can buy a vowel. Is there a D? Wait, that's not right. a vowel. No. Wow. No. It's um, been a long. It's been a long day. It has been a long day. Yeah. So um, you can follow our podcast at Twitter page at Pod and Hard Place. Uh, follow Chris at CJ underscore Kirk1979 and follow myself at Stephen underscore Colton or underscore Stefan Colton because <laughs> I'm working on my my uh, my transformation chamber right there now. There we go. There we go. It's, it's, here, here's a like, spoiler for you. It's just going to be a closet with clothes in it. Um. But don't tell anybody. I'm gonna drink blue Kool Aid and get in there and go, and then come out with a hat on or something. And I'll be the same guy basically. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, uh, I was gonna bring on our our very special guest Conan O'Brien, but he's over there in the couch waiting. I mean, sorry, Conan, we ran out of time. Right. Well, next um, week, Conan. Next week. I should have said Matt Damon because Jimmy Kimmel has that bit. I don't know if anybody watches Jimmy Kimmel, but every episode he's like, oh, our apologies to Matt Damon. We're out of time. We'll get you next week and then never get him. It's just like a running gag. Right. 
Um, so I guess Conan O'Brien's going to wait on my couch for six years. But we'll always have Batman and Joker and The Flash, and Supergirl, and Wonder Woman. I've almost got a full Justice League. And then a Green Lantern. And uh, I don't know who else is missing. Aquaman, but mm, never liked Aquaman. This is the part of the show where I keep ranting and right. make no sense. Um, yeah, I'm like, so we're gonna go. Uh, we're gonna go back in time and just, and follow us on Twitter. <laughs> All right, it's been a good show tonight. And um, All right. hopefully we'll see you next week where we talk to Matt Damon. No, uh, maybe who knows? I'll start tweeting him now and see what happens. Um, Stranger things have happened. It has been. Yeah. Stranger things coming soon to Netflix. Right. Um, but yeah, I'll go. We'll go ahead and end it here. Um, it's been a fun. Thanks for everybody for commenting, uh, following the group. Continue to like show your support and go on YouTube and follow us. Um, I don't really know how to post a, a comment or the YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube and search for Between a Pot and a Hard Place. You'll see it up there. This video should be up there sometime tomorrow. Um, and very soon, hopefully, we'll be live streaming on Facebook and YouTube again. So we'll see. We have things going. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna. We're gonna sell the name to Disney, and they're gonna host us from now on. We're gonna get paid a million dollars a week. Um, no, sounds good to me. Maybe. Sounds good to me. I have to. I'll give a, a two day notice to my job, and then. All right, but yeah, have a good week, and we will continue to talk next week about um, maybe more heroes, and of course more what ifs. And I'll try to get caught up on what ifs because. All right. I, I really need to watch those last two. And by, the, really by this time next it. week, there'll be another one anyway. Right. So, all right. Well, it's been fun and have a good night. And we'll talk next all week. Right. Take care. You too.